Hi everybody, this is Eric and welcome to CCTV here. Um, I'm happy and very honored actually to have uh, uh, Bruno Condre from, uh, from iBasis, uh, powered by Tofan of course, uh, and he's a VP uh, Messaging Solutions. So welcome and happy to, uh, to have you here. Thank you Eric, yeah? very happy to be there too. Thank you very much. Um, let me get immediately right into it. Um, fraud in SMS. Um, how relevant is SMS fraud in the in the wholesale industry? And it could be peripheral or, or is it a mass phenomenon? What what? Well, it's uh, it's a very vast, uh, I would say, topic that we are opening with. Uh, in fact, uh, what is very difficult is that many people associate to fraud. Mm -hmm. What in fact is sometimes not really fraud. It can be seen as a, uh, some abuse of rights in a way, but it's it's. Most of the time, some solutions that people are exploiting or are using to, uh, to optimize the cost of the services they want to use. So we see it as fraud because it, it doesn't go necessarily, necessarily the direct way or the most efficient way, but it goes over some channels that are still open and that are letting people make more profit on, the, on this. So it, it has to be very, uh, very uh, well measured before using fraud uh, because what I think is that in a certain sense, it's something that is uh, uh, an optimization more than fraud, I would say. Do we have a definition on fraud? What fraud I heard, actually uh, is? Yeah, I heard some definition of fraud. Fraud is, uh, some people say that fraud is when you go close to a barrier and that you know that behind that it's a bit gray and so on. Uh, on my side, I think the, the, the border is more thin than that. Uh, mm -hmm. In the sense that, uh, uh, is, it, is it a fraud when, for instance, you do something that is authorized? For instance, in the SMS business, what is the most common? Uh, thing we observed recently is the emergence of uh, what people call SIM boxing. So you use okay. a SIM card in a in, in a diff, in, in a small modem and you you broadcast SMS. In fact, it's authorized to do it. You can mm. do it. It, it. It's it's something that you don't necessarily uh, breach any law with. Unfortunately, or there are some exceptions, obviously, but it most in most of the cases, it's not a fraud as such that you just optimize your subscription, I would say. And this is where a lot of value is wasted by operators. This is where a lot of uh, uh, what some people call fraud is being going and delivered. And this is a, a, a very uh, very special scenario. So if, if you will, what I think is, uh, is fraud is, uh, is something that is much more complicated than that. It's much more a mix of uh, fraud and holes, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's, it's more of conceptual things. Mm -hmm. How can we restrict it? Is there a possibility oh, there are, where we can restrict it? I think there are many ways to restrict it, but, but if you want to be efficient, it, it is as in many, many environments. In fact, you need to address multiple things in parallel. Mm -hmm. most, in most of the cases, it, it, you, should be, you should see it as a kind of, a, of a house that you want to enter having many different doors. Because the paradox of the, of the SMS, for instance, is that it's so good that usually you can only get from one source. Mm -hmm. okay, it's one operator reaching yes. uh, the, the subscriber. So what is, uh, what is amazing is that when you look at the ecosystem of, uh, of uh, SMS, you can see that you can reach uh, an operator either by some uh, international channel, either by SIM boxing, as I said, either by domestic interconnection, and, and, and you can also find it um, very well, but you can also uh, reach the operator by different gates within the operator organization itself. So some operators, for instance, they have a division and link international business, another division and link wholesale and retail business domestically. Mm -hmm. And finally, you can see that there's no real convergence of all these uh, offers. So sometimes it's more efficient to use the domestic channel to deliver international content and reverse. So it's, it's very, very well. And, and, and the industry um, is uh, so booming. There's so much revenue and so much activity at stake that whenever there's a weakness in the system, obviously everybody goes in this uh, weakness point. That's just the nature of the business. Yeah. So what I think is, to come back to your initial question about uh, what, 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 uh, what is being done and what should be done, I think it's a mix of different things. Some people buy, uh, so some operators buy a firewall, they believe that everything is secure and safe, but it's more complicated than that. Because I was about to say, is that, is that true? Is that, is that actually, can we protect ourselves actually 100%? 
100% will be hard because there will be always some creativity. So you need to always be vigilant. But I like to use uh, the image of the Pareto you know, when you, uh, when you need to spend 20% of your effort to address 80% of the problem. So I think we, we have probably some good solutions already in place. Mm -hmm. But if you, if, if you come back to what I was uh, explaining previously, it's a combined effort. And most of the time you are in operators that are big organization where, uh, like for every big companies, where sometimes the corporate interest is overpassed by some department interest or by some department constraint because it's not only it, it's not always a choice if you want for the department to be mm -hmm. stuck in this model. Sometimes you know they took some legal commitment to make an offer for an SMS access to a given company yes. for a long time and they need to bear with this liability. So it's it's a, it's an effort that requires a big coordination, uh, requires a global vision, and uh, and requires also um, I would say uh, um, a projection out of the organization or of the organization itself sorry. okay uh, in, in the sense that if you if you want what what is amazing in the sms industry today is that there's a paradox usually um, as a as a merchant i would say you you have a you give privilege offer to your direct customer usually you don't necessarily do the same if your customer buy your products through a distributor and so on usually the price should be less interesting what is amazing here is that you have some people who want to work directly and closely with operators so they take uh, direct connections they spend commercial efforts they sign contracts they do everything to work closely to the operators but ultimately they end up in a situation where this direct access this direct connection they have to the operators that they spent money on they invested on and they wanted to to really show their interest and their and their uh, uh, willingness to, to to partner with the operators is completely jeopardized by some players that did not spend this amount of money that did not spend this effort and that are able to use backdoors to deliver the content causing a very big uh, issue in this market because uh, from a moral standpoint it's just amazing to realize that you make all the effort to work directly with someone that exactly. is the only owner of the good and ultimately you are not competitive on your market mm -hmm. so what are you doing in this case uh, like any business you will need to survive so the paradox is that you set up direct lines you set up direct connectivity and unfortunately what is going on ultimately is that you need to use other access way uh, to deliver the content to this operator because otherwise you, you cannot survive no absolutely um you were talking about the departments i mean internal departments uh they might also be quite worried like the financial department hmm? i can understand that that your cfo is 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 looking at, at possible damages it could do to the company. So how do you think that um, uh, your financial department and your CFO actually is, is tackling this or trying to tackle this? But if you think about the, the CFO of an operator, I think that uh, unfortunately the business that is at stake is not necessarily seenable until there's a big hole in the organization. So I know of some cases I won't mention. But it's severe. I mean, ah, it's extremely globally, severe. it's severe. Extremely severe. So I can understand that it's it is on the eyeball at least a couple of times a year. It could be of the CFO and and in his department. It could be, and I would say if 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 it's not tackled properly in time, it can end up later on with bigger consequences. I have a story in mind. I will I would not name the easy operator, but a big big operator in Europe uh, with more than uh, 20 million subscribers that were. Uh, Splitting completely its international department with its wholesale department, and the guy in the wholesale they were selling goods at below uh, uh, below the cost that the international department were, were, was buying it. Mm -hmm. One day, suddenly, after two years, people woke up, and the, the the wake up was very very violent because we were talking about uh, millions and millions of dollars at stake. So, I, I think it's it's something that is uh, uh, to be addressed. On a global basis, but I'm not sure the, the CFO level is really uh, the, the, the easiest to, to, to see this. I think it's much more an operational level. Mm -hmm. It's much more, I would say, the, the way people are tackling some business. So I, I, I could mention voice, I could mention SMS, but I mm -hmm. think it would be important to make sure that within the finance department mm -hmm. itself, and these are uh, where uh, the operators are successful. And I think your, your question is very good in this aspect. The fact that if you would name within the, the financial organization just a CFO for SMS business only, I think it could be interesting to, to probably uh, detect much more, uh, I would say, inconsistencies and mm -hmm. much more dysfunctionment that could happen in the, in the operator. Or dysfunctionment may be not the right word, maybe the, the right word is 
to be more optimal in mm -hmm. the way this business is processed. Where uh, finally you, you, you will end up uh, identifying the case where the same, the exact same good can have a price depending on the channel you access exactly. it from zero to, to six. Yeah. Just amazing. Well, why do you think that, that, that actually the well-known and the, let's say the old school or old fashioned fraud scenarios are still successful? I think it's it's hard to blame someone. You know, I've been in the SMS industry 20 years ago, and at that time, everybody was predicting the end of SMS. So I think the, the, the SMS is an uh, unexpected success somehow. Mm -hmm. I think it, it has been successful, successful, but every time we hear about new technologies coming that will take it over. And, and, and what is also true is that for operators, uh, SMS, uh, when you compare it to the global uh, um, uh, PNL, it's it's not so material as, as it could be. Uh, so I, I tend to believe that uh, people are are not um, looking at the SMS as something so appealing, something so trendy, and so on. So there's this recent change that has happened where people realize. That yes, finally, I, I see this in the market. I, I hear this. People start to realize that uh, the OTP or the, the over-the-top application mm -hmm. uh, are, uh, are not necessarily to completely take over SMS and the what we call personal-to-person mm -hmm. person, uh, person -to -person messaging. Yeah. And, and even the, the application to person is not necessarily so, so ready to be taken over by an, a, new, uh, a new emerging uh, solution yet. Maybe it will happen, we don't know. But, but what is for fact that today people start to realize that uh, SMS is here for still some time and, and I think that and this is where is my standpoint and this is where I think that iBasis uh, wants to commit and wants to go is that we believe today that it's probably more important to tackle this business in, uh, in, in markets that are not yet uh, completely digitalized as I would say for instance the emergence of SMS comes with the emergence of uh, uh, I would say economy uh, digitalization. Of course, because this is why you receive your uh, booking notification. Your How far are passport. you in in basis with the uh, digital transformation? Oh, we are in the middle of a revolution. You know, we are, iBasis has just been acquired by Tofan. We are making a major consolidation, completely realigning and restructuring. With all the headaches, all the beautiful stuff, but yes, also the but headaches. Yeah, but it's magic. It's headaches and, uh, you, you know, I, I've been growing in a, in a business environment where I know the complexity makes a difference. Complexity doesn't mean creating something that is so complicated to, to deal with, but complexity means to deal with some problems that people are not able to tackle really. So it's mm -hmm. not about creating necessarily rocket science things, but it's just making things more obvious and more seamless for people who want mm -hmm. to adopt it. So typically it's magic what is actually going on uh, in this aspect. And it's very exciting. Very exciting because you take a, an historical business that some people predict to be uh, uh, dying or to be uh, disappearing and you are able to find... I heard that 10 years ago as well. Yeah. So. It's, it's, it's and we're still here. So, yeah, it, it, it will happen some days. For fact, but what what is exciting is to be able to finally completely redistribute the cards, completely change uh, the way people can look at it, and completely handle differently also this business. So, so the Tofan activity by uh, uh, taking over this business and by willing to inflate a new uh, a new approach, a new strategy, more dynamism, mm -hmm. is perfectly in line with what we try to do in a sense. And I mm -hmm. think that the focus is really to to be able to also understand that there are some. Uh, telecom economy, I would call it telecom economies that are probably two, three, five years behind some others when it comes to uh, cope with digital services and the, the needs that comes yes. with it. So I'm, I'm definitely excited. I like this, this kind of challenges and I think it's extremely rewarding to be able to, to, to show everyone that yeah, there's still something and, uh, and, uh, and, and we can still make big, big, big impact. And to be part of this industry. Of course. So, of course. last point. What is your outlook for the uh, for the for the next coming years? Well, the outlook is uh, obviously to uh, to demonstrate that our uh, strategy works. So mm -hmm. the outlook is very simple: is to come with very concrete case of solution uh, that we can publicly share with uh, with the ecosystem. Demonstrate that it works. Demonstrate that our solution comes with uh, um, a, a very strong advantage in the sense that uh, we have decided to make it completely uh, uh, impactless in terms of capex because our solution comes only on the performance. So if there's no performance, there's no cost for our partners. So we just are able to come with solutions that helps monetize helps generate more revenue and are only generating revenue. They cannot generate loss for our partners. No. We may take some if we fail, but I'm not likely to fail. I, I'm pretty confident that we are really getting there and we have a very interesting traction. 
and I'm particularly confident about what we observe in, in, um, in emerging markets and, uh, and some uh, uh, bigger markets that are starting to realize that yeah, there's, there's something big at stake. Okay, it sounds fantastic yeah, and really exciting. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. So Bruno, thank you very much for, for being here. Thank it's been you an honor to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to talk to you and to, to, to understand pleasure. a little bit Anything. more about uh, what iBasis and the, and the Tofan Group is actually uh, trying to achieve in the market. And I think it's a very exciting uh, period ahead. Anytime. Anytime. Okay. Thank you very much, Eric. Thank, thank you. you. So thank you, everybody. Um, uh, this was CCTV and I was here with, uh, with Bruno uh, Condre. He is the VP Messaging Solution and uh, at uh, iBasis, powered by Tofan. Thank you so much. See you next time.